What is up everyone, Nick here, and in today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to make your very own metal arc reactor. Again. More specifically though, I'm going to show you how to make an arc reactor that uses NeoPixels for the lighting and also uses a motion sensing board to turn it off and to turn it back on. And just to refresh your memory, SLS printing stands for Selective Laser Sintering. Most machines, how they work, they have a thin layer of metallic powder on a bed, a laser comes in and melts the powder into a solid metal, and then rinse and repeat, it adds extra layers of this microscopic powder, melts it again until you have a three-dimensional object. Now, of course, I don't own an SLS printer. Those cost like tens, if not hundreds of thousands of dollars. I don't have that kind of money. I'm not Tony Stark. However, that is where this channel sponsor comes in, PCBWay. PCBWay is the industry leader in PCB fabrication and 3D printing solutions. From custom circuit boards to innovative 3D printed prototypes, PCBWay offers unparalleled quality, fast turnaround times, and competitive pricing. For example, when you're ordering all the parts to be 3D printed out of aluminum by PCBWay, the total cost should be around 150 ish dollars American, which honestly isn't that bad because once you're done your project, you're going to end up with something like this, a really, really cool and realistic arc reactor casing. And with that out of the way, I'm going to clear this table right here and I'm going to cut back to past Nick and we're going to unbox all the parts from PCBWay. Where is the box? Aha! I found it. And the box is wide open. How about I just dump it this time? Hey, yo. That is some crunchy bubble wrap though. Oh, Lord. Anyways, I think we've got some parts in there, but I can't tell. Another one of these giant stickers. I need, I have like 10 of these now. I don't know, I don't know what to do. Should I just make a shrine just of PCB way stickers? I don't know. Oh, no way. No way. Yo, I wasn't kidding when I said I was gonna become Thanos. This is a white PCB ruler. Uh, where are the other ones? Where are the other ones? Yo, I got a blue one, I got a purple one, I got a white one. Look at this drip. This is, this is drip, this is awesome. I love this. Okay, now let's talk about the actual parts themselves. Uh, let me open this one first. So, this time around, instead of just getting the metal parts done, I decided to also get the clear resin parts printed by PCBWay. So, let me show you guys what we got. So these are the two main clear pieces that we're going to be using for this arc reactor. And honestly, I think from now on, whenever I'm building stuff with PCBWay, I'm just going to order the resin parts too while I'm at it because these prints are insanely good. Not only are they clear, the edges are super crisp and there's no scarring or anything from supports or whatnot. I think these might've been SLS or SLM printed. I'm not entirely sure, but like, I've never printed something of this quality myself. So to have this in hand is just dope. So I'm gonna be putting these to really good use later once we start assembling everything and doing the light up feature for this. If you guys are looking for quality resin printed parts, I definitely recommend checking out PCBWay because the prices are actually really reasonable. So let's move these to the side and talk about the metal components. Uh, let's start with the big bag, shall we? Hey yo, hey yo. Okay, so these are some of the bigger components that we're going to be using for the arc reactor. Of course, we have the front end with all the details that's going to be facing towards us. And there's quite a bit of texture on the parts that we're gonna have to spend quite a bit of time sanding down if we want to get this perfectly smooth. But besides that, these prints came out pretty good. Then of course we have this outer casing right here and you can see all those little slits along the sides. They look really nice and crisp. No imperfections whatsoever, except for the actual texture of the print, which is a result of the printing process. But yeah, no, these are these are looking great. Okay, next up is some smaller stuff. Those were the big components. Let's see what we have here. Oh, we got little baby bits. There we go. So these are four out of the eight pieces that are going to go around this one clear piece. They basically just click into place right there all around this piece. So I'm gonna put those right away just to show you guys. So they don't all fit perfectly on there, but with some light sanding, we should have no issue getting these to fit. How about I just yeet all this on the ground? Oh no. 
And what do we have in here? We have the rest of them. So these are slightly different. They have different details on the side. So they go in between the other ones just like that. And they make for this really cool pattern, which I think you guys are gonna like. So yeah, that is pretty neat if I do say so myself. Then last but not least, we have the actual palladium core right here, which we're going to be sanding nice and smooth. And then we have the base piece, which is going to go on the, oh my lord. Oh, I see, these pieces have to come off. This has to go there, and then this goes over. Anyways, I will figure, I can't seem to figure out which orientation this piece goes in, so we're just going to figure out once we actually start assembling this thing. This one here is supposed to go in there, just like that, but pushed in more. Then this goes right on top, just like that. So now that we have all of our metal parts out, I'm gonna go in the shop and start sanding all of this. I'm not gonna repeat myself because I've already done two other videos where I talk about SLS printed parts, but basically I'm just gonna start with a rough pass of 120 grit sandpaper, mostly with my electric sander, but I'll also be using stuff like sandpaper and files and whatnot to get in all the hard to reach areas. And then we're just going to increase the grit significantly until we get to a point where we're at about a thousand grit wet sanding. That way this surface is like perfectly, perfectly smooth. And then we can polish this with some sort of rubbing compound and then seal it with a clear coat. So I'll probably be including footage right now from when I actually start working on this thing. And I'll get back to you guys once everything's sanded and we're ready to assemble it. That sounds awesome. Look at this, look at this. I hope you guys can hear it. I'm gonna take off my mic right now. I'm gonna put it right here. Right? Still on theme with the ASMR today. I don't know what's going on. And once we're finally done sanding, polishing, and sealing these parts, we can finally move on to the assembly. Now, Neon Robotnik's arc reactor files are all slightly different, so let me show you guys how this one is assembled in particular. First off, you have the main face of the arc reactor itself with all the nice little inner details. Then you have this clear piece which goes directly behind it to diffuse the light. And next up we have this outer casing. This doesn't really do anything except look really cool on the outside of this clear piece. Now I'm not gonna fit these together just yet because they are a press fit and I don't wanna risk having this stuck in here just yet. And then we have this second clear piece which is going to go on the back of this other clear piece. And then we have all these little greebles that are gonna go around this clear piece. But not before we install this backing, which is supposed to be like the palladium core holder. It goes right here, and then these alternating bits are going to wrap around and hold this in place. Now you might have already seen, but the two most important parts of this whole process are these two clear bits. This is what's going to house our lights and all of our electronics. Speaking of which, let me explain to you guys what I really want to do for this project. So I've already considered putting a battery in this thing so it could be self-sustaining, but that's not quite going to be possible. So I am going to be installing a plug which is going to be fitted inside of this palladium holder, which means we're not gonna be able to put the palladium core in the reactor. It sucks, but it is what it is but we are going to be doing a few really neat things with this arc reactor. Now, number one, we're going to be using NeoPixels. Now, if you don't know it already, NeoPixels are basically individually addressable LED lights. So that means that we can program them to change intensity, to change color, to turn on, to turn off, etc., etc. NeoPixels are just a lot of fun. There's just so much you can do with them. Now, the reason I'm going with NeoPixels is just because I have all the different sizes at my disposal, and as it would turn out, they fit perfectly inside of this hole right here in the main clear piece. So that means we can have them all in here and we can have the rest of our electronics in this separate clear piece. NeoPixels are basically like the name brand of these sorts of lights. You have different libraries like the Adafruit library for programming them and you also have FastLED, which is another different library for coding NeoPixels. I'm just going to say NeoPixels. It's going to be a lot easier for me to explain to you guys and it's going to be easier for you guys to look up your own NeoPixels if you're interested in using these. But not to worry, I will be leaving all the information needed in the description down below so you can follow along with me. Now that's cool and all, we're going to be using NeoPixels and whatnot, but what I really, really want to do is make this basically like a touch lamp. So that means that I'm not going to need to unplug and replug the arc reactor to turn it on and off, and it's not going to have any visible buttons on the outside, because we're going to be using this right here, this tiny, 
tiny, tiny, tiny red board is what is known as a TTP23 board. Now this is basically a touch sensor board. You're meant to touch the little circle on the back of this with your finger to turn it on and off. Now, once this is inside the arc reactor, we're not going to be able to reach it, but as it would turn out, if you leave a little bit of wire on one of these connectors on the board, I will show you which one in just a second when we actually start soldering this, it acts as an antenna, which increases the range outside of whatever prop you're building. So that means that we can activate our NeoPixels on and off without even needing a button on the outside of the prop. So we can keep it perfectly seamless, no buttons anywhere. We just need to hover our hand over the prop and it's going to turn it on and off. But while doing my own research, I could not figure out a way to actually program the NeoPixels to do this. I just couldn't find any proper tutorials online explaining this, but this is where I came up with a pretty ingenious idea or a really stupid idea, depending on how knowledgeable you are with coding. This might look absolutely brain dead to you, but it works. Essentially, I took XL97's Iron Man helmet code and just sprinkled in a little bit of NeoPixel stuff and voila, you have code which allows you to turn on and turn off a set of NeoPixels with a button. Now, most of that code is basically useless because we're not using servos, we're not using the ILEDs and all that, but it still works. So if you can do those modifications, awesome. If not, the code's going to be in the description below. We're going to be uploading that code to a board of our choice. Now, I recommend going with something like the ATtiny85 board that we used in the previous helmet motorization video because this is actually going to fit in the casing of our arc reactor. Now, the Arduino Nanos are going to be slightly too big. They're not gonna fit in this quite right. If you need help figuring out how to actually code your ATtiny85 board, I definitely recommend checking out that helmet motorization video. We cover it in full detail, and I have some extra information in the description of that video that'll help you out. Now, once you have your code uploaded to your board, we can finally start talking about soldering. Now, you might wanna start soldering your NeoPixels or whatever lights you're going to be using for this thing. Soldering up NeoPixels is actually quite easy because they only require three wires. You need the positive, the negative, and the communication wire, which is what's going to tell the NeoPixels what to do, what intensity, what color they need to be at, and all that fun stuff. When soldering your NeoPixels, even though they're in the shape of a ring like this, basically think of it as a long strip. You're going from your board all the way to the very end of your NeoPixel strip. Now, when buying your NeoPixel rings, I definitely recommend picking up ones that have a total of six pins on the back. Basically, you'll have two grounds, two pins for the voltage, and two pins for the communication going into the board and communication going out of the board and into the next ring. So the order that you solder these doesn't really matter. As long as you have power and ground going to all your NeoPixel rings and your wire that is the communication, goes from your board to one of the rings, out of that ring and to the next until it gets to the last of the rings or to whatever NeoPixels you're doing. That way they're all connected in a daisy chain and they can all communicate with the Arduino. Now I've already gone ahead and soldered some NeoPixels together and they're connected to a JR connector. The reason why I like using JR connectors for NeoPixels is because they tend to have three wires, a black, a red, and a white. So it's quite easy to keep track of what is what. Red is voltage, the black is ground, and the white is communication. If you need help soldering NeoPixels together like this, I definitely recommend you go check out my other arc reactor videos. So I'm gonna move this to the side and I'm going to show you my wiring diagram. So I don't know how well you guys can see this, but basically we have the NeoPixel right here. We have the com, we have the negative, we have the positive, which is going to go to a 3.3 volt pin on the ATtiny85 board. And then we have these three wires, which are also coming out of the ATtiny85 board, which are going to be for a TTP23 board. So we have power, we have ground, and we also have the one that's going to be connected to the switch. And then we have that extra wire sticking out of the TTP board for the antenna. And then we have two simple wires also going to the ground and going to whatever is going to be the voltage input pin on the ATtiny85 board for the power, which is going to be another JR connector that is going to be sticking out of the palladium core holder. So I really hope this made sense. If not, you're more than welcome to ask questions in the comments down below, but with that out of the way, let's start soldering. So when it comes to actually wiring everything together, everything is going to have its own pin on the board, except for the ground wires. We are going to need three ground wires all coming together into the ground pin on the board. That's because we have the power, we have the NeoPixels, 
and we also have the switch. So I'm planning on having all three be twisted together before I solder them to the board. So I'm just going to remove a few of these strands of the wire itself. That way they'll actually fit through the board or else the wire itself will be too fat to actually fit in the hole. Same. Same. So right now the wires are crossed into an X like this and then I just slowly twist them together until they look just like that. Now this is ready for tinning, but we're actually going to add an extra wire onto this before we tin it to the board. And there you have it. So this is ready to be tinned with solder and then we can solder it to the board. So let me grab my helping hands, keep these together, turn on my soldering iron, make sure it's not too hot and we can start tinning. So hopefully you guys can see this right now, but I'm going to start soldering some of these wires to the TTP board. So I'm gonna put ground right here. Gonna, there we go. Push right in just like that. Then lastly, we have our pin for power. There we go. Beautiful. Now I'm just gonna use a set of pliers to cut out some of this here. These wires sticking right out. There we go. Beauty. So next up, we're actually going to be wiring our antenna to the TTP board. I say you get something about yay long, and we're going to be soldering to the last pin to this little black bit right here. There's three prongs on either side. We're going to be soldering it to the prongs closest to us on this side to our right. So the last one on the right here, one, two, three, this is the one we're going to be soldering our antenna to. So let's go do that right now. So I have my wire here. I'm just gonna lay it right there. There's already a little bit of tin on it. It should melt right onto that pin. Beautiful, awesome. We did it. And now that this is all wired up together, we're basically ready to solder all of this to our microcontroller of our choosing. So we're gonna go ahead and wire this little white wire, which is going to be for our NeoPixels to pin number four. Then we have the voltage output, which is either 3.3 or five volts, depending on your board. We have the ground wire. We have the voltage input wire, which is coming from battery. And then we have this white wire, which is coming from the TTP board, which is going to pin number two for the switch. So let me grab my board, get some solder on it and solder all this up. One eternity later. So it's the next day. <laughs> I was expecting that to take just a few minutes to troubleshoot, figure out what's going wrong. I tried using multiple boards with different code, uh, with different NeoPixels, testing out the different code with those NeoPixels to see what was wrong. The boards would work, but the NeoPixels would never turn on. Then I finally decided, screw it, let's see if it still works with an Arduino Nano. And lo and behold, if I grab a battery, plug this in, oh my lord, and you will see that it works. The touch sensor works and it turns on and off the Arduino using the helmet code. Why doesn't it work on other boards? I have no idea. If you do have an idea, please feel free to leave a comment in the comments down below. But uh, yeah, so it works off an Arduino, which is fantastic. I did figure out a way to actually make room for the Arduino inside the arc reactor because a bit ago, or it's this way for me, that way for you. A bit ago in the video, I did say that there wasn't enough room for an Arduino. I lied, there actually is. The only thing is these NeoPixels are going to need to be right against this resin piece. So we might end up seeing some of the individual pixels. However, with the way that the front detail piece is laid out, most of the individual NeoPixels won't be visible because of this uh, center detail ring. We might see a few, but honestly, it's not gonna be the end of the world. There's just so much going on on the front of the arc reactor, it's going to be barely noticeable. So I think we're going to be good. And with that said, now that everything is working correctly, the only thing is there is a slight delay when turning back off, but it works just right. As you can see, I'm not even touching the board. My hand is just slightly getting close to the wire and it triggers it. Fantastic, so I'm going to unplug this and I guess we're just gonna start assembling this thing. Uh, I think we're going to start with this main clear bit, installing the NeoPixels inside of this. It is going to be a tight fit because as you can see, it's like the exact outer diameter of this hole right here. 
So we are gonna have to push ever so slightly on this thing to get it in. There we go. And now we need to align it correctly. So I am going to be using a little bit of super glue on this. So let me grab this here. Getting glue fumes all up in my eyes. Yes, okay, so this kind of works. So I put the Arduino on an angle and I'm wrapping this wire, which is the antenna all around this. So the red light is on for the Arduino board. If I bring my hand next to it, I can see the red light for the TTP board. And if I bring it away, it turns on. And if I do it again, it turns right back off. And again, and it turns on. And again, and it turns right back off. Yeah. So now if I just put the cover on this, there we go. Um, I just realized I forgot to install this piece around this, which means I'm gonna have to completely take this apart again. Oh boy, come off. I will need to unplug this. Then these two are gonna be mated basically forever now because it is a really tight fit. So now these two are one piece. I don't think I'm gonna need to glue these together because that was really tight. Yeah, that'll do. That'll do nicely. Now let's see if I can actually put this back together now. Okay, I'm just gonna stuff the electronics right on through and we're just gonna work our way backwards. So, so it doesn't fit as deep as I thought it would because of this metal piece. So that actually helps us quite a bit. So since this metal piece lifts this clear piece up, this means we have more room on the... That means we have more room on the inside. Uh, let me pick that up. So now we just need to add these at intervals all around this bit. We should have something that looks pretty darn nifty. Okay, wow, these just kind of popped right on. That's awesome. Now I will need some glue. All right, so it's all glued together. It should work just fine. I did test it right before starting the gluing process. So it should work, it should. That doesn't mean it will but we're about to find out regardless. So let me plug in the JR connector right there. That's all plugged in. Don't roll away on me now. Stay there. Plug this right on in. The Arduino seems to be on. I can actually see the red lights through the transparent piece. It's kind of cool. And if I bring my hand here, the red light on the TTP board comes on and it turns right on. It works. Success. Mm. <laughs> That's so cool. Oh, that is freakishly awesome. Look at that. Look at that. Look at it. Ain't that the coolest thing? But yeah, you can see the uh, red light inside. It's kind of cool. So once it's on display, hold that thought. Let me grab a display stand. So here's a display stand. Let me just unplug this, feed it through the stand itself. Just like that. And this is actually a movie accurate display stand from Iron Man 2, Neon Robotnik designed this one. I'm in the process of sanding it because these are indeed aluminum parts by PCBWay. So at some point this will be all chrome, all nice and shiny. So let me just align it correctly in the display stand. Just like so. Plug this back in and we should see, and it turns right back on. <laughs> Yes, and then I also have the palladium core right here. Sadly, since the JR connector for the plug is in the slot, I can't have this inside the arc reactor, but that's fine. If I could just make like a small display to hold this right next to it, I think all of this would look pretty, pretty good. But yeah, I could not be happier. Honestly, the NeoPixels are pretty well diffused. You can kind of see them in person, but on camera, the individual pixels completely disappear, which is exactly what I want. That is pretty freaking sweet. So I think what I'm gonna do is compare my other arc reactors to this one we just built today. So let me go grab those. Okie dokie. So here I have my Mark 4.2 and here I have my Mark 2 arc reactor. So again, this one is made out of steel. So it weighs just about a pound. And this one right here is made out of aluminum. They look so freakishly cool together. The only one that's missing out of this whole setup is the Mark I. I do have it, but it's resin printed. Let me grab it actually. So this one kind of feels like air compared to these ones, but how about we place them? Let me scoot this one. Actually, let's do it the other way around. Voila, 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 et voila. 
Do I have a problem? I might. I might have a problem. Uh, so the Mark 1, if you remember from our very first arc reactor video, I built the Mark 1. This one has the Arduino on the outside of the reactor. I might rebuild this at some point so that all the electronics are inside the reactor and I can just plug it in whenever. But right now, I can't really turn this one on. And this one, I will be upgrading. Right now, it still has the battery on the inside. I'm not really a big fan of this. I wanna be able to display it with a wire running to it. That way I can always be powering it. So I'm going to be completely gutting the electronics out of this one. So I'm going to be doing something very similar to this arc reactor, which is exactly what I have set up in my resin printed arc reactors on my Etsy. So these are my resin printed arc reactors. I'm selling them for about $200 on Etsy. They both include a wire that goes from a barrel connector to a USB plug. So you can mount it in a wall, in a power bank, whatever you like. And they also include display stands, but they're printed in black PLA filament so you can display them wherever you like. And they also work just like this arc reactor right here with a TTP sensor. That way you can turn it on and off just like a touch lamp without needing any button. So let me put these right next to each other just like that. Oh yeah. Okay, now I definitely have a problem. <laughs> Why do I have so many? Well, the I can answer that actually. They're just really cool to have. But is it really a problem if they look this good? I don't think so. And with that said, that's going to be it for today's video, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. I just wanna thank you guys for all the love I've been seeing on my channel as of late. We just broke 5,000 subscribers and we're already on our way to 6,000 subscribers, which it's kind of bananas. If you think about it, I've only been doing this, sharing stuff on social media, especially Instagram, for the past year and a half now. And just the growth I've seen in that small period of time is just, it kind of boggles my mind. I can't really quantify it in my head, but man, thank you so much. I really appreciate it from the bottom of my heart. If you have any suggestions for future videos, maybe you really want to see me build another type of arc reactor, please leave your comments in the comments down below. And a huge thank you again to PCBWay for sponsoring this channel and for sending me the SLS printed parts to build these reactors. And if you haven't already subscribed yet, please hit that subscribe button. And while you're at it, hit that like button too. It would greatly help the channel. And I hope to see you guys in the next one.